Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. Some new patches here. So all the leaders got changed in terms of provisions. Um, the mulligans are phenomenal. I, I can't, if you haven't played New Gwent yet, play New Gwent, it, it's great. The, the mulligans just, it feels so, so good. It feels so great not to get punished. Uh, but anyways, um, with the new meta means, or with the new patch means a new meta, um, and Usurper. So Usurper, in terms of provision costs, Usurper got 10. Uh, this is the lowest on the, uh, the scale. The scale ranges between 10 and 19, Ethne being the highest at 19, uh, and the average is obviously around 15. Uh, so Usurper is the worst, or he, I guess he's the best leader because he's the the most expensive <clears throat> anyways so just like the name of the deck uh, implies this is a human deck um one of the strengths of usurper is obviously denying your opponent's win con or, or their leader which a lot of the times is their win con um this applies most to herald so herald you usually play in round three with dagger you do eight damage and then you get to boost um dagger up uh, this also very much counters Bruver decks. So 90, 95% of the time, a Bruver in round three is playing on Shiru, boosting Shiru to usually four or six, uh, and then bringing your opponent's cards down to that number and then going off and getting anywhere between, I don't know, 12 to 24 points on Shiru. Uh, he gets insane value uh, in a long round three. Usurper completely denies that to the point where your opponent will play like a two-point Shiro and kill like one of your twos. Uh, yeah, it sucks. So Usurper is really, really, really good. Um, th there's a reason why he only gives 10 provisions. Uh, and because of that, when you build a deck around Usurper, you're not really building a deck that has like one win con or two win cons. Uh, you're really just looking for points. You're looking for solid points. Uh, and that's why I've been running a human deck, because you can take advantage of Doppler. Doppler is kind of like a neutral vanguard. It allows you to boost itself based on how many of another unit you have in your hand. Uh, and if you play all humans, well, it gets a lot of value. The only non-humans we run in this deck are Unicorn and Chironex, simply because, well, it's Unicorn and Chironex. Cards are insane. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I'll run through the list really quickly. I've played a deck similar to this. The only other Usurper deck I've really seen on ladder is Shoop Usurper or Shusurper. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this. One, because your average play is worse. Uh, the amount of value you get out of Doppler is just a lot. It's it's, it's a ton. Uh, on top of that, you can get a lot of value out of your Slave Infantries. Uh, and the consistency is there. Uh, you have stronger round ones. You're not playing garbage like Wolf Packs in round one. So... I prefer this deck over Shoop, but I, you can play Shoop variants if you'd like. Uh, I'll run through the list really quickly. Tibor, Tibor is just a solid card. Um, some SK decks do thin to zero, so you can sometimes play Tibor for a full 13 value. Um, you can use Vitafer to see what the top card is going to be. Uh, and depending on what that is, uh, you can throw away a card or, let's say, leave a ghoul on top so that Tibor pulls out a ghoul. Uh, Unicorn, Chironex, auto include in every deck. Roach, good card, works well with the Sire. Do note, it doesn't synergize with Magni Division. So if you're playing Magni Division, uh, wait a while before playing a gold card. Um, Count Cowdwell, I like this card. It's a human, strong card. Uh, you play tall units like Tibor, so it's not a big deal. Uh, if your opponent plays tar tall units, you have Chironex to kind of deal with that, and Peter to reset if they're playing like monsters. Uh, Sire, great card. Uh, reset the Roach, pull it back out. Uh, do note, if your opponent locks Roach uh, in round one or round two, whenever Roach comes out, and you assire back into your deck, it won't come back out again. Yeah. Also, on the flip side, if you're playing against Nilfgaard, uh, and Roach, if they're playing Roach, uh, and you have nothing better to lock, like they don't play an engine or anything, lock Roach, because you deny three points in round two or round three. Uh, Isbel, this card is just phenomenal. Isbel can be a win con. Granted, you have to have last say. So going into round three, if you do have last say, you play Isbel as your second to last card. Your opponent plays a card, uh, they play their last card, uh, they pass, it comes back to you, you get to play Isabel, and you get a free card, basically, um, and you get to choose between uh, your card or your opponent's card. Also, you can use Vitafer to set this up. So sometimes I'll see like three cards on top of my opponent's deck, and one of them's a really good card, 
but because it's round three, they're not going to be drawing it. So I just leave it on top so that when I do Isbell, I can take their card and play it. Gimpy. Gimpy is a phenomenal card. It's worst case scenario, seven for eight, which isn't bad. Um, if you queue into NR and they're playing Drog, you auto win the game, which is kind of cool. Against Nilfgaard, you're looking to hit Slave Infantries. Uh, even in Shoop matchups, they do play Slave Infantry. Um, Squayatel, I if they play two Swordmasters, great. Otherwise, you're hitting Neophytes, or I don't know, maybe they played two Dragoons in the round. It's a solid card. Vreem D, very strong with Slave Infantry. Um, you don't have to get insane value on this. You can just hit two cards. Two cards, you're getting eight for seven, which is fine. So don't worry about playing this card in round one on one set of Slave Infantry. It's, it's, it's okay. You, you don't have to freak out. You don't have to get maximum value. Uh, sometimes I even play Vreem D on the Brigades. It really doesn't matter. There's a lot of flexibility in the deck. Uh, slave Infantry, very strong card. Self-explanatory. Uh, this card... Uh, you can deny your opponent's win con. You play th this card is just silly. You play the card sometimes. You remove your opponent's shoot, a unicorn, Kyronax. Uh, you can set up for Tibor. You can set up for Isbel. This card is just insane amounts of synergy. It's a really strong card. Peter, very strong against monsters. Uh, we're also in a unicorn meta, so this card almost always gets value. Uh, Brigades, they work well with uh, Reem D. They thin your deck. Good card. Nice proactive play. Doppler's, we mentioned earlier, works really well in a human-based deck. Uh, you play these early in round one, you get like 9 to 10 points, depending on how many Doppler's slash Unicorn Kairos you have in your hand. Uh, these two cards right here, uh, Cav and Bomb Heaver, they're interchangeable. You can run two Bomb Heavers, two Cavs, or one of each, because they are 5P. It depends on what you're playing against. If you're seeing a lot of uh, Herald SK and they're playing artifacts, you're going to want to opt for the Bomb Heaver. If you're not seeing that, you probably want the Cavs. Uh, I run one of both because I was seeing a decent amount of SK Herald. The problem was 50% of the decks don't actually play Spear. So it really depends on what you're seeing. Uh, that's going to be something you're going to have to figure out on your own, depending on what you're seeing. Uh, Nausicaa Sergeant, one of the best bronze engines in the game. Auto include Magni Division, same thing. Uh, make sure to look at your hand. Uh, if you have cards that need to be played on the melee row, an example of this would be Gimpy. I think that's really it. Oh, and, and Cav if you're playing it. Uh, otherwise, there are scenarios where you will play the Magni on the melee row. But a lot of times you just play it on the back row. Oh, the Brigades also you have to play on melee row. Um, in round two or three, I would consider playing Magni on the front row, simply because you do have cards like Asire and Isbel. Uh, and Slave Drivers to round it out, strong card. Yeah. So overall, uh, I've been pretty pleased with this deck. My round threes are generally Uni, Cairo, whatever I have left if I didn't play it in round one. Isbel, Asire, if I haven't played it, maybe one or two Slave Infantries, and like a Tibor. Um... There's no, like, two-card combo, three-card combo other than playing, like, two Slave Infantries into Vreemdy, uh, but that doesn't always happen. Uh, it, it's a really good deck. I, I suggest you try it. Just denying your opponent's win con sometimes is enough to win by itself. Uh, yeah. Give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think about it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I actually saw a Reddit thread yesterday saying I keep queuing into the these artifact Squayatel decks, and... That may or may not be my fault. I mean, if you need justification, you can do the good old blame the game, not the player. I've been asked for the deck list 10 times yesterday. What do you mean? I felt like people add you. That's such a bad shoop, dude. Just go shoop charm, grow some balls. The best is shoop boost hand, actually. So if nothing happens, yeah, he hit the boost hand. You've been asked for the deck list? What do you mean? Do people actually add you after and ask for the list? That's pretty funny. That is what you folk lack. Still ignoring me? Hey, Pear. How are you? Six? How'd I get this? Alright, shoot. 
We'll just leave it as is for now. We'll, we'll peter it later on. See if we can hit is something here. here to whom I can entrust my missive? We can deny three or we can deny nine. I think I'm... I like denying nine. It's a bigger number. You saw a cruel Hensel artifact deck yesterday? That's definitely possible. I don't think it's very likely, but... I guess it could work. Anything with artifacts can work. Turns out artifacts are pretty good. We're never gonna kill an engine. The two engines in the deck are these two cards, and they're both on the board, and they're both boosted. So just go ahead and gimpy. It's fine. I might just Peter TA pass. What am I? Yeah, because there's really nothing else to play. Playing a three just doesn't feel good. The common I guess I'm okay with this. This goes to eight. I'm okay with an eight. I'm professional. Playing some NR today. Maybe. Yes. It's always unicorn. That feels bad. All right, he gets plus two here. He needs a seven. If I play NR, it'll probably just be like pull test. Cause Demovan doesn't feel worth it. And Hensel, I mean, they, they, there might be a decent Hensel deck. There might be a good Hensel deck, but I'm not gonna be the one to find it. I'll let somebody else do that. They feel like there's potential with Thaler and Bloody Flail. Doesn't Thaler steal your opponent's charges, which is useless? Yeah, it's good if people are playing NR, but no one plays NR, so what's the point? So we're looking for a slave in this. That's good too. I don't want that. That's eh. There are worse cards. Magni. I have no melee locked cards, so I can snap Magni. The problem is the roach off of this can get messed up. Either way, we get rid of this. Very nice. Two slaves. Um, <clears throat> I would have liked this, but whatever. It's fine. I'm gonna get this going before either of these because I'm a little like I'm assuming he has like a Peter or something. This dice the slave driver so we don't play it. Just play renew to play unicorn from graveyard. Yeah, I'll play a 13 point provision cost card to play a 12 from graveyard every now and then. That seems good. I mean, what else am I killing? We're denying two points. It's probably worth it. It's a five or six provision. You can move your charges around the field, giving insane amounts to charge the flail. Hey, what? You can move charges? I, I thought it was only from your opponent's cards to your cards. I didn't realize you could move from your cards to your cards. I'll have to take a look at them after this game. Hey, Credence, how are you? Very underrated card. I mean, underrated. I think it's a strong way of saying it. The card has never seen play ever. <laughs> I've never seen that card. Once. This doesn't play around the Spearman, but you already played it, so I don't mind. You can use Aratuza and Priscilla on him. I'll, I'll take a look. I'll take a look. 
You, you might be onto something. We need to get this out so we can slave it. Say hi to me. They're dead already. Isn't it better to kill this always? Huh? What are the odds he can damage this? Coco Drilla, thank you so much for the eleven one. The game actually pretty good again. Smile, so looking forward to the expansion. Dude, I can't wait. Expansion's gonna be great. So there is a scenario where I slave my count. If you insist. I'd rather not, but I, I'm gonna leave Ooh, myself the opportunity. What did you lock? Wait, what? Oh, he locked a sire. Uh, okay. Okay, so no Cairo, which means his uni is plus four max. Type Thanos for free sub. Don't type in the exclamation point Thanos. You'll get timed out. And everyone's getting timed out. Time for a beating! You don't play Scorch. Don't be silly. I hoped we could Scorch and Shoop Nilfgaard? There's no way. There's, there's n no. Okay. So the best draw would be Peter. I don't have. He has Peter, right? Yeah, give me your Peter. Oh, that's pretty good. Is this a soldier? Play safe, but I don't need to. I don't need to play it safe. I can just do this because we knew he we know he got Albrecht, so he'd have to get another booster damage card. And if like and he has to play it right then and there. If he doesn't play it then and there, I, I, Caldwell won't flip anymore. So this is the correct line. Cuz it won't flip anymore. No. Because I know what he got, I, I don't need to worry about it. I strive above all to be just. Why am I playing bomb heavers? I mean, I, I, so I played this deck last night off stream and I kept queuing into Herald decks and they were all running artifacts. I put in bomb heavers. Psych. If I remove the card, it means I'm going to queue into it. So. We have to pretend like we're removing the card, sneak it back in, and then nobody will know. See, now we queue into a Herald deck. It's pretty close to Herald. They both have beards. Check Thaler? Oh, yeah, about that. Yeah, I need to probably check Thaler. Is it Thaler or Thaler? I wonder what variant of Boober he's running. It's Thaler? Okay. Hey, Francesca. Thugler? Thugler? 
I can't see how I'm mispronouncing it. Nanshiru? I've never seen a Nanshiru Brewer deck. Don't you fret about me. I can take care of myself. He loves his Regis, so I'm gonna hold off on this. I don't think he plays Regis though, not in a Milva deck. We'll see. You tried Ethne? I have. I. I don't know how to make Ethne work. Bruver just feels better than Ethne every time. I always regret not running Bruver whenever I play Ethne. Follow me this way. I, I just see zero reason to be running Bruver or Ethne over Bruver. Yeah, you get four extra provisions, but the flexibility on Shiru is worth more than four provisions, in my opinion. I can kill it, but I'd have to Gimpy. Which I don't really mind, but he's gonna play another. So I guess I do mind. You shall hear out what I have to say. This card is way too good. Cheese. For 6p? Death to old one. Pretty sure if he was 7p, people would still play him. I think he's too good. I really do. I don't think anyone would actually disagree with me. No, the odds that it lives is pretty low, but... Serious question, do you think that after the mulligan change it's still worth it going for SK to thin to zero? Yeah, why not? You don't really get punished. The thinning in SK is ridiculously cheap. That. that also, you have to remember, thinning to zero allows you to discard garbage cards like Wolf, which makes you able to play more expensive cards. Like, when you play Herald, you don't have to play any garbage bronze cards because you just thin them all out with uh, Duran and Verna. So, yes, I 100% think it's still correct because there's no reason not to. I would have thought Ethne has more flexibility on Shearer because Bruver only offsets by two. You're right, but... Very rarely does that actually matter. The matchup where that matters is against Slave Infantry, but you have to remember that you can always use Archer. Um, Slaughter them to a the other issue is sometimes you don't draw Ithlin and Shiru. Uh, yeah, you can call Shiru out, but then you have to have an Elf on the board, and that can be diff uh, tricky in a short round three. Um, and if you don't draw the call, then you have to draw both Ithlin and Shiru. If you draw one without the other, I mean, if you draw Ithlin without Shiru, it's not a big deal. But if you don't draw the Shiru, or if you don't draw the Ithlin with the Shiru, you're in a rough spot. I actually can't do this comfortably. I want to play these two cards. NG, please. Time for a beating. I'll keep pushing. I don't know. I just prefer Bruver. Also, it feels easier. You can. It's just more flexibility. Also, the other thing. The proactive, or the positive points that you can put on your side of the board is huge. So, like, if Ethne could boost your cards by one, 
that would be pretty useful, but she doesn't do that. I've had games where I get into round three with Ethne and I use zero Ethne procs. And it feels really bad. <laughs> Calm down, Tiberius. Give Ethne hearing, healing arrows. No, I don't think that Ethne should get healing I, or boosting. I, I'm just saying I think Bruver's better. Unless Scorch becomes meta. Ethne is better than Bruver if you're playing Scorch. I will agree to that. So if he dry passes, we're playing Doppler. It's my worst card. I hope he bleeds. I, I highly doubt he will, but if he does, it's really good for us. We have two slaves. These are our best two cards. Small duple. How about six charges? Um, six is too much. I think five is good. I, I think if Ethne had five charges. No, but that doesn't fix the issue. I <laughs> Giving her an extra charge definitely makes her better. There, there's no doubt there. Yeah. But I still don't want to play her. Because she's reactive. I, I don't know. I, I think Ethne could be good if Squirtle had better finishers other than Shiru. The problem is Squirtle's finisher is Shiru. And Bruver just feels better with Shiru. Any tips for new players? Craft Chiron X, craft Unicorn. They're the two best cards in the game. In terms of usability, because you can use them in any deck. And you should use them in every deck. That alone will increase your win rate by a considerable amount. I need to kill that. Which means I need to play Unicorn for right now. My issue with playing Unicorn is I don't have... If I'm playing Unicorn, I'm throwing it on uh, a Sire. Because I, I need the slave targets. Which feels really bad if he is professional. And they always play professional. Which makes this a really hard play. Like, to the point where it's better just to play Chiron X here and lose the four points. <laughs> but she'll be 14. Yeah, she'll be 14. But he can get it down. He has archers. Never assume, like, yeah, maybe if he has one card left in his hand or two cards left in his hand, you can take that that line of play, but that's not the case. New haircut? No, I just... <laughs> My hair is just back. Do you have any tips on how to get a good haircut like yours? Get a headset. What do you think is a tier one deck? Uh, Harold, 100%. Is trap deck worth playing? I mean, I like it. I think it's really fun. Um, I had a pretty solid win weight with it yesterday. Um, it is a little bit more difficult in terms of um, the play style because it's not just put points on the board. All right. Peace with if I compare that deck to this deck, this deck I'm literally just looking for the most amount of points possible and putting them on the board. All right, there's, there's not a whole lot of uh, thinking ahead. With the trap deck, 
um, especially when you're getting bled out in round two, the ordering of cards is very, very important. You'll get better at it the more you play it, obviously, but when you first play it, uh, it's going to be a little rough. So we need to hope that he doesn't have call. The time of the white frost. He actually didn't draw call. Yeah. You live and die for the emperor. You can't call this. I'm probably too dumb for it. I mean, you can learn. Don't, don't play a deck because it's or don't not play a deck because it's too difficult. I miss the old pumpkin, the five scorch pumpkin. The skiru at the bottom of my deck again pumped the left thumb. <laughs> Always at the bottom. Thank you so much for the eight months, High Fate. Welcome back. We'll play some Squirtle today, don't worry. Vryad! So I'm pretty sure it's correct to play the 10 drop now. Because if he ever, like, let's say he garrisons an Ida or something, I can never play this card again. A lesson in humility coming now. Okay, if he garrisons Ida, I'm kind of screwed no matter what, I guess. But I don't think he would do that because Peter is a card. Is all swarming with Isengrim a good idea? I don't like Isengrim. I don't think he's a good card, personally. I, I I hate that card. Very rarely does it get nine value. Very rarely. It usually gets like six value, six to seven. Every now and then you get like 10 or 11 value, but that's conditioned on you drawing it in round one. And gold cards that are conditioned on drawing them in round one to be relevant is not something I like. I mean, we, we could lose the flip on this if we don't play Tibor. He's got one seven and we got four sevens. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Do you mulligan away Caldwell versus Woodland? Um, yeah. Not in round one, round one. So what I usually like to do is I just play Caldwell in round one. That's, that's usually how I do it. I don't need suffering. this to go off. For what? I mean, we're, we're up a, a decent amount of points. I think we still click it, because if we hit Peter, it's really good. Worst case, it's like we both draw a garbage card. You got to keep peasants on a short leash. Okay. This game is interesting. Never had your kneecaps broken. I don't know. Maybe it's a call. This is incorrect if it's... Hold on. Okay, so he's never gonna call Shiru because he's got a five point on the board. So we don't need to buff the Isbel. We just need to play around professional, I think. So boosting this is always incorrect. So let's not do that. You gave him the card? Oh, right, 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 right. I don't know. Yeah, whatever, chat. It's still, whatever. It's still good practice to play around cards even though you know what this last card is. I don't know, I just assume, what, chat, I,